What's up guys, AdventureDex here. Welcome back to AdventureDex Garage, the place where I show you all of the upgrades and modifications that I'm doing to both my Wranglers. In this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at the long-awaited, and I mean long-awaited, release of the Carabotta K1. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're wondering what the heck is a K1, let me bring you up to speed. A few years ago, I did a video for a company called Carabotta on their new product, the digital dash called the J Pro. It was an absolute hit and everybody loved it. So when Carabotta announced their new product that was coming out, the digital head unit called the K1, it was highly anticipated. But then the world ended. So because of that, I've actually had the K1 installed on my Jeep JK for almost two years. So in this video, I'm gonna be able to give you the full rundown of what's in the box, how to install it, and my two year review for the K1. Let's dive right in. The K1 is set to be released on October 8th, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you guys to go check out along with that AdventureDex discount code. So check it out guys, this is everything that's going to come in the box except for the backup camera which they call the Batman because it's already installed on the Jeep as I mentioned earlier. So I've had the pleasure of having this on the Wrangler for two years and I gotta say the hardware is really really good but we'll talk about that more in the review. So you're going to get your 9 inch screen which fits directly on, it's a plug and play, you're going to get all the wires that you need and you're also going to get the tray which fits on to the back. So. Let's jump into the Jeep and get this installed. So let's talk about the installation. The installation for the K1 is pretty easy. Everything on the back is plug and play and you get all the wiring harnesses that you're gonna need. The only difficult part is the dash itself. You're gonna need to make a cut as you can see here and this is the dash that's behind the instrument cluster. So this is held in by two seven millimeter bolts and some clips. It'll simply pop right out after you take the screws off. And the reason why you need to take this off, it's one entire piece including the radio housing which probably has some seven millimeter bolts on it. But unfortunately, I did this two years ago so I don't have the other piece to be able to show you that. But the K1, after you cut the dash, is going to line up seamlessly and cover that and then this is what your dash is going to look like. So you're going to want to follow that line, make that cut with either a blade or a Dremel and then once this is done we can go back into the Jeep and start the installation. So after you successfully voided your warranty by cutting your dash in half, you want to put it back in place. And you simply put it, it should fit and snap right in place and then you can re-bolt the two 7mm bolts on the bottom. So when you get your K1 head unit you can see on the back all of the plugs are all color coded and they're very easy. We got two antennas for the radio, we got three other plugs that are all color coded, we, the backup camera is green and then the power is black. So I'm going to get the wire harness that comes with it, I've already plugged everything in. You want to get the black end and just plug it in to the back. Should plug right in. Once you got that plugged in, you can then take the end that says power cable on it and you can plug that directly into the power that was going into the factory head unit. Boom, that's done. All of the other ones are color coded and they're very easy. You can see now the light has come on on this module and you just simply want to plug them in. After you've got everything plugged into the back of the K1, you're going to take the provided tray and you want to slide it in. It has two clips on the back and it fits in to the OEM position. Once that's clipped in place, then we can go ahead and fit the K1. The important part is just to make sure that you get all of these modules and wires situated so that nothing is pinched. This one, by the way, you can leave undone. I'm not exactly sure what it's for. I'm going to get everything organized back there and you can kind of use the vents. You want to get your cables all organized and then you can just push it into place. 
So pro tip, before we go any further, I'm just gonna turn on the ignition just to make sure that all of the connections are working and that also that our backup camera is working as well. So let's see, it just booted up, that's a good sign. All right, there you go. Now I'm gonna turn it on and test the backup camera. Cool, backup camera works as well. Now the last thing we can do is reassemble our dash. So we're gonna put back in our seven millimeter bolt that's behind the window switches. I'm gonna put uh, one of the vents back in, put the window switches back in, and then put the last vent in. Now, let's use it. So let's talk about the K1. Because I've had it installed on the JK for two years, I think I could give you a really good Dexpert opinion review. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn it on and show you guys the boot time. So the ignition is on now. There you go, it's booting up. I don't think it takes this long every single time. I think it's because I had it unplugged and this is booting it up for the first time, it takes a little bit longer, but I'm pretty sure that the system itself stays on. So when you turn it on every single time, it doesn't go through this. Um, I'll put a seconds clock on to see how long this is taken. And there you go. That's pretty much how long it's taken. So it's booted up now. And uh, let's first talk about the hardware and then we could talk about the software itself. So the hardware I think is an A plus. The, um, Housing itself is made out of plastic, but it is a very rigid, hard plastic. The build quality is very good. All of the buttons are nice, easy, and um, everything is very intuitive. S fits seamless, and uh, I'm really pleased. My only complaint about the hardware is maybe this seam on the top here, but uh, my dock does fit, and it does cover that up, so not that big of a deal. Uh, as far as hardware, like I said, I am very pleased. Uh, in my opinion, it sort of looks factory, which uh, I like. So uh, the thing that we need to talk about is software, which is sort of most important. The, the hardware is great, and you're going to get a 9-inch screen, but the software is really what you're going to use all of the time. And I think they've done a pretty good job. I think there's a lot of improvements that can be made, but keep in mind that this unit is two years old. This was actually one of the prototypes that uh, I was lucky enough to get that they sent out for testing purposes. And so I don't know if any of the software has been updated since. Uh, I have been told it has, and I would assume it has, but I'm going to base my review uh, based on this, and it's probably going to be better the version that they released on the 8th of October. So in terms of software, you're going to get all of your basic uh, items, your radio, your music, your phone, all of the apps that are Android based, video navigations and settings. The home screen is pretty cool. It has this texture, which is actually the same texture that's on the interior on the dash and the doors, which I really like. You got your JK, your time, your radio. So if we go on to the radio, you can see it's touch screen and uh, you can get all your presets and you can search very standard but everything works great and again it is very intuitive when you press it, it happens right away music um, you can have it on here built in but most of that you could actually go straight into the apps and you can see it's an android based and this is sort of where i sort of appreciate the unit a little bit less uh, i have an iphone and so um CarPlay would have been really great to have on where it just has the apps that you use. They claim that you can hook it up to your phone with a, a Z box, I think it's called, and you plug your phone in and then you're able to use it. If you have an Android, obviously this is going to work great for you. I wasn't able to make the CarPlay work, but again, this is a prototype. So hopefully on the final version that does work. When you go back to the home screen, this is really where the sort of feature of the K1 and the J Pro sort of shine. Um, so if you can see on my J Pro, I don't know if you can see because the way the steering wheel is, I have in road mode, and if I take the sand mode and swipe it over, it'll then go onto the J Pro, which is really cool. Uh, I gotta say, it is a little bit gimmicky, I guess. I mean, I'm not 
too sure how much you would actually use this for, but it is super cool. And I do think that there is a lot of integration that can be made from the head unit and the J Pro itself with the right software. And so you could do a lot of things in terms of music to be able to play the music on the head unit and be able to see it on the J Pro, send it back and forth. And same thing with the navigation as well. It would be really cool to be able to have this and then send it back over. Uh, it's not gonna load because I don't have it hooked up to the Wi-Fi, but you'd use Google Maps. It does work just like it would on your phone. But it would be cool if you could have a slightly better integration between two. So basically what I'm trying to say is the hardware, a plus the software i think i would give it about a c i mean it's as good as uh any android head unit out there very intuitive everything works uh it does have the bluetooth capability i could hook it up to my phone uh, dexter's iphone you can make calls listen to all the music that you have um, via bluetooth it works great and uh and i really like it i've been using it for the past two years uh it's worked properly my uh, biggest downfall I would say is that uh, the CarPlay I wasn't able to get it work and it doesn't come loaded with satellite radio but I'm sure one of these apps you could probably download uh, the satellite uh, radio this is the one Z-Link that's supposed to work with the uh, CarPlay but couldn't get it to work everything else works in terms of YouTube and everything else you just got to give it the internet connection so overall I'm happy with the product and uh, I'm gonna leave a link below Hopefully Carabotto may send me an updated version so that we can do a full review of the new software that's entails. But otherwise, I'm very pleased and I can't wait to see what other products Carabotto brings out. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the backup camera. It is included and they call it the Batman. I'm gonna shift into reverse. It automatically pops up. It does have the lines. And it's funny because they, it mounts at the very top of the hard top. So I'm not sure how this would work on a soft top Jeep. Obviously, when you're taking it off, it does have a release if you take your hard top off. So uh, that's good to note. Uh, the wheel on the back does take up quite a bit of space, but the camera is incredibly clear. Very, very clear. Clearer than a lot of the other cameras that uh, I've seen, especially on Jeeps in the past. Probably at the same quality that you're going to find on the JL. But it's great. It's up very, very high. I can see everything behind. And the good part is, is that it's plug and play, so you don't really have to do anything other than wire, fish the wire all the way through up to the dash. So that's where this video is going to end, guys. I really hope you enjoyed taking a look at the K1. I've been really enjoyed running it on the Jeep Wrangler for the past two years, and I'm really excited for the release that's coming on October 8th. So I'm going to leave it linked below along with the AdventureDex coupon code so you can go over there and check it out. Comment below and let me know what head unit you're running on your Wrangler. And don't forget to click that subscribe button to join Team AdventureDex for weekly Jeep videos. I hope these videos give you the confidence to tackle your next Jeep project. As always, I'm AdventureDex. Until next time, this AdventureDex Garage, keep on jeeping.